Hello and welcome to Tech Deals. High details for gaming, ultra details for screenshots. I have said that numerous times in previous benchmark videos. Today, I'm going to demonstrate it. We're going to show you five different detail levels in the same game, low, medium, high, very high, and ultra detail at 1080p on this i7 7700K computer running at five gigahertz, 16 gigs of DDR4 3200 megahertz RAM, and an awesome RX 580 eight gigabyte graphics card. This is a decidedly mid-range gaming PC today. Four cores, eight threads, RX 580, 16 gigs of RAM. Yes, it's overclocked to five gigahertz, and I understand that's a little bit above mid-range, but I suspect many of you have computers that are, aren't exactly like this are similar. Maybe you have a fourth or third generation uh, i7 that's overclocked. Perhaps you have a Ryzen 5 2400G that's running at well, maybe four gigahertz, but still running very nicely. Then this definitely applies to you. The game that we're testing today is Assassin's Creed Odyssey, an absolutely terribly optimized game. And one of the reasons why I picked it is because it runs very well at high detail and it runs like absolute garbage at ultra. Not every game is going to do this. And I'm not sitting here saying never run ultra. That's not what I'm saying. But what I am saying is for a very small drop in visual quality, you can get dramatic performance improvements. How much so varies from game to game, but especially a lot of Ubisoft titles are like this. Ghost Recon Wildlands is a great example of a game that at ultra detail runs terrible and that at high detail runs very, very well. Same thing is true on this card. This card plays 1080p high detail great in both of those games. It does not play ultra worth a darn on either one. So we're trying to show you today that you just don't have to turn it up to ultra. In just a second, I'm going to put on the screen in quadrants, medium, high, very high, and ultra detail. Can you spot the differences? About halfway through the benchmark, I will slow it down to about 10% or so and let you watch the individual frames. How are the blades of grass? How are the trees? How's the sky? How's the texture on the cobblestone walkway and on the wonderful uh, tiled roofs? Can you see a difference? Maybe when I slow it down and you look at it pixel by pixel, you might see small differences. Ask yourself this question. When you're actually playing the game and shooting at things and there's explosions or, you know, there's action on the screen, are you looking at the cobblestone paths? Are you looking at the blades of grass? Is the difference between even medium detail and ultra detail really that big of a difference in the middle of the action? I would submit that it's not. And I'm gonna show you the performance difference on this setup between medium, high, very high, and ultra. And then as a bonus, I'll show you low and medium and why you can turn the detail down far enough that you really do start to lose detail. For example, the grass completely goes away on low detail, but I'll show that separate towards the end of the video. Today's video is brought to you by Humble Monthly. For $12 a month, you get at least $100 worth of real honest to goodness games every month. 10% off store purchases and over 60 games in the trove to play anytime. This month, Call of Duty Black Ops 4 Battle Edition, Blackout and multiplayer game modes included and some unlocks. In addition to the main game every month, you get between six to 10 additional games. You can see here prior month's bundles. No commitment, cancel anytime, keep your games forever even if you cancel. This is a phenomenal value. Support charity. A portion of your purchase every month goes to support charity and supports this channel. Check out the link in the video description below today. As I said, I'm not telling you to run Ultra. If you have an RTX 2080 Ti and you're playing at 1080p, by all means, crank the detail to Ultra and enjoy your $1,300 video card at 1080p. The two of you doing that can sit down and well, not watch the rest of this video, but for the rest of you, I think this is more what most of you have, and I think it will really demonstrate just how big the performance gap really is. Another consideration is when you look at benchmarks, an awful lot of tech reviewers test it ultra detail, and I see this from websites to other YouTubers. I'm not calling anybody out here, and I'm not saying that they're wrong. So what I told you was true from a certain point of view. 
but it doesn't necessarily reflect real world performance as I think most people either do or should play games. It does uh, do a really good job, for example, when you're comparing graphics cards. If you're trying to look at this card versus this card versus this card, cranking the details up to ultra makes sure you're absolutely GPU bound and it shows worst case scenario. The problem is if you look at Assassin's Creed Odyssey or Ghost Recon Wildlands or Shadow of the Tomb Raider at ultra detail, you go, man, I got to go spend four or $500 on a graphics card just to play a new game? This sucks. No, you don't. This card for under $200 will play every game on the market today with an average of about 60 frames per second, 1080p high detail. It will not do it at ultra. And as I said, the visual quality difference isn't that great. So you don't have to go spend $500 to get an RTX 2070 or a Vega 64, although those have actually come down in price a little bit. You can, but you don't have to. And that's what this video is meant to do, is to show you just how nice the performance gains really are. Now, let's start off here with the four main detail settings from medium to ultra on the screen, and then we'll talk about them. Here you can see all four runs side by side, or rather in quadrants, medium in the upper left hand corner, high, very high, and then ultra in the bottom right hand corner. Can you tell the difference? Is there anything obvious that just sticks out to you? These are running at full speed. So when you're running around and shooting things and jumping and going from building to building, you're not again necessarily gonna see the blades of grass and the quality of fruit at the farmer's market and how well the loincloths are hanging. Okay, I know that sounds weird, but it's a thing in games. And so this gives you a chance to just watch it as it actually runs within the game. Now, I do have the labels up there so you can see which is which. I thought about taking them off, but because the MSI Afterburner real-time performance is on the screen, and for that matter, because the game's built-in benchmark numbers are on the screen, you kind of already have an idea of what's going to happen. I could have covered them up, but eh, this gives you a chance to just watch them as the benchmark plays. Can you legitimately tell the difference? Oh, they're small, small changes. Let's run these built-in benchmarks again, but when we get to the first batch of trees and grass, I'm gonna actually slow it down to 1% normal speed. I won't hold it there very long or this video would be two hours long, but I want you to take a look at the blades of grass on the ground in the bottom left-hand corner, the tree, look at the reflection on the stone wall. Look at, well, the clouds in the sky vary from benchmark run to benchmark run, that's just a backdrop. See a difference? Well, there's a little bit, but I don't think there's much. Going back to normal speed here, we're going to slow it down for the cobblestone roof or the shingle roof. I don't know what you call it. There's some birds up there, but the bird position is slightly randomized. Can you tell the difference in the textures, the lighting, the depth of field, the tiles? How about the big red tarp in the middle of the screen? It's actually kind of shiny in the upper left-hand corner on medium. It's a little bit more dull, but perhaps maybe textured or depth of field better on the ultra. These are really, really minor differences in my opinion. The next spot that we're going to stop it is the water because, well, frankly, the ripples and the light reflection off of the bits of the water, I think. I thought about stopping it here, but if I did that 16 times, then again, the video is too long. So we're going to let it run. You can see the water coming up here. Take a look at the reflections. Take a look at the waves. Take a look at the... That's not much difference. That is... It... Would you... If, you... if these labels weren't up, if the benchmark numbers weren't up, if I were blocking them... Would you be able to pick out which is which? They all look very similar. The differences are just so... They're just very... Is it worth the performance hit? Again, if you are one of the two people watching this who have an RTX 2080 Ti for 1080p gaming, well, who cares? This is irrelevant. Ultra everything. Rock on. But wow, on an RX 580, which is a value-oriented card, great deal... Okay, that's enough. You get the point. Medium detail averaged 70 frames per second. Ultra detail averaged 38 frames per second. Wow. High was 57. Again, 1080p high detail about 60 frames per second. And very high was 51. You can see low detail at 81. I'll show you that in just a second. And then the minimums are, of course, much lower. Buy more graphics card to get better performance. I don't know about you, but holy smokes, look at the performance difference. That's not 10 or 20% faster. 
That's nearly double the performance. That is a huge, huge leap in performance. Yeah, to be sure, the details are turned down a bit, and if you freeze the game and you just stare at screenshots, yeah, you can pick out the details and the level of the cobblestone and the waves and the water, but you're not doing that when you're playing the game, which is why high details for gaming, ultra details for screenshots. Now, let me really quickly show you low and medium side by side so you can see that turning down one more notch often destroys your detail level for real. Another good example of this is Ghost Recon Wildland, which I have tested extensively on this channel. Medium detail looks really nice. In fact, medium, high, very high is all very similar in Ghost Recon. It gets better, and if you freeze frame it, you can see it. But when you're driving around, blowing stuff up, flying in helicopters, stealing vehicles, it's minor. Low detail in Ghost Recon Wildlands is, frankly, absolute garbage. Worse than Assassin's Creed Odyssey, in my opinion. Low detail is like a whole other game. Enough of that. Let's take a look at low detail. On the left-hand side of the screen, we have low. On the right-hand side of the screen, we have medium. Can you tell the difference? Well, probably not right here, but in just a second, it'll be plain and clear as day. Pause the video right here if you want to. Look at the grass in the bottom left-hand corner. Look at the grass that doesn't exist on low detail and that does exist on medium. Beyond the grass, these are amazingly similar. The birds are there, the people are there, shadows are there either way. I mean, shadows on low detail. Now, the performance boost for being on low is not huge, but it is there and it does help, as you saw from the chart before. Look at the waves, the ripples. It's more subtle, I suppose. It's perhaps more natural on the right-hand side on medium, but they're still there on low. I mean, you still have water, waves, ripple. You see some fire there. The fire is on both detail settings. Shadows are on both detail settings. You can play this game on low. If your hardware doesn't handle medium, go for it. What setting you should run at depends upon your hardware. The more hardware you have, by all means, turn the detail up and enjoy your games. But don't be afraid to turn down the detail to get playable performance because those blades of grass might look nice when you're just staring at it, but when you're playing the game, smooth playable frame rates often mean much more than a shinier blade of grass. As I said, all the tests were done on this i7-7700K build. I did this on my channel about, oh, two-ish years ago or so. I'll put a link to that in the video description below. Overclocked to 5 gigahertz on the 120 millimeter Corsair cooler back there. It runs warm, but it does the job to be sure. 16 gigs of RAM DDR4-3200 CL16. Very nice graphics card. I recently upgraded the SSD, but before I mention that, all of the recordings that you just saw were recorded on an external capture card on a second computer. I have an Avermeteor Gamer Live 4K capture card that were recorded on a separate machine. This machine didn't know it was being recorded. No performance loss for that. The only things running on this computer were the game and then MSI Afterburner in the upper, right -hand, uh, upper left hand corner because it had to be in order to show the real time performance. The only major change I've made to this machine and the reason for the clean reinstall is the SSD upgrade. When I did this build originally, it was with a Intel 600P NVMe drive. Well, it turns out those drives were pretty garbage. I didn't know it at the time that I built the machine, but I certainly found out pretty quickly thereafter. I have replaced it with an Intel 660P. Big, big difference. These are QLC drives. They are vastly improved over the old 600P drives. This now has a two terabyte boot drive, wicked fast performance. It's not as fast as like a Samsung 970 Evo, but for most people, it's absolutely good enough. $100-ish for one terabyte, $200-ish for two terabytes. If you're looking to upgrade your machine right now, that is the deal in SSDs. I own several of them. I've upgraded this, and I've just did another build with a Ryzen 7 2700X with it, and I gotta tell you, I absolutely love these drives. Linked in the video description below, as I said, will be this build, this SSD. I could link the CPU, but I'm not going to. I will link the graphics card. RX 580s are still deals, 
and still worth considering. 1080p high detail, it'll still last you another year or two at least, and trailing off to medium detail thereafter for under $200. It's a great time to be a PC gamer. You'll also find all my other links down there, social media, Twitch, Twitter, Discord, etc. Links to Amazon, Newegg for shopping. Those are affiliate links. They support the channel. Greatly, greatly appreciated. Be sure to like this video, comment, subscribe, hit the bell notification icon to be notified when new videos are coming out. I appreciate you all taking the time to watch. Let me know what you think, and I will see all of you next time.